Across the United States, and in many areas around the world, humans have embarked on projects to rehabilitate natural ecosystems that we have systematically polluted, degraded, and destroyed over the past 150 years. These projects can range from cleaning up oil spilled into the Gulf of Mexico, or picking up trash in your local park, to the in-depth physical remediation of a freshwater ecosystem devoid of the endemic life it once held. The PA Fish and Boat Commission's restoration of Big Spring Creek in Newville, Pennsylvania is just that. Projects like the one here not only make these places more beautiful for people to spend time in, but they legitimately improve the health and proficiency of an ecosystem. One could argue that these are the most impressive of our efforts to bring a place here on Earth back to life. The small, little-known tributaries like Big Spring Creek, located deep in the rural parts of our country, are just as important as our massive and famed ecosystems like the nearby Chesapeake Bay. Where the small rivers start is where life begins. As biologist Chris Kuhn puts it, water is the lifeblood of everything. As indicator species, the health and populations of brook trout who live in these minute wonders are a clear view at the future that this lifeblood will support. Located in rural south-central Pennsylvania, Big Spring was once a focal point of the state's industrial revolution, and its fascinating history speaks to the unique and beautiful habitat it is today. Throughout the 1700s, a series of mill dams were constructed on the creek in order to grind locally grown wheat into flour. These mills, along with their dams, had significant impact on the creek for the better and the worse. While in operation, they provided necessary structure and hiding spots for native brook trout. They required maintenance, including the dredging of silt buildup, further improved available habitat. However, when the mills and dams were deconstructed in the 1930s, those valuable contributions were eliminated almost completely. Big Spring Creek continued to be a thriving ecosystem. However, silt buildup began to cover native trout spawning areas. Another blow to the watershed's health came in the late 1950s when a grassroots group decided to clean up the creek and its surrounding riparian life. The removal of fallen trees, boulders, and natural dams destroyed the majority of the remaining habitat for the species once living there. Big Spring Creek was also home to two hatchery operations during the 20th century, which not only allowed for escaping farm trout to displace native species, but also contributed to lower dissolved oxygen levels thanks to nutrient overflow from the hatcheries. Both of these hatcheries were eventually closed due to their adverse effects on the watershed. In 2008, the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission began its official remediation project on the creek. It is here that Big Springs began its journey back to a healthy home for native brook trout. This project included log structures such as cross veins, mud sills, and bank reinforcements. What happens in the headwaters affects what happens downstream. So, you know, what happens here ultimately goes down to the Conna de Gwinnett and the Susquehanna and the Chesapeake Bay. Fly fishing anglers have been catching trout for centuries, and their direct interaction with rivers and streams have made them crucial to remediation projects around the world. Big Spring is no different. For the fisheries management process involves the human dimension. If you, if you, if you ignore angler interests and angler behavior and other things in your management philosophies and management strategies, they're ultimately going to fail. So throughout this whole process, we've been very involved with the anglers and, and coming to consensus on goal and objective for, objectives for the project and future management. So it's, it's critical to involve the anglers in any kind of management scheme. And the anglers also influence the policymakers, which 
make decisions on how these projects and funding and other things proceed. Without the aid of anglers and the great interest they take in rivers, streams, and fish, it is very possible that projects like this would be passed up. Policymakers and environmentalists alike could find a variety of other habitats or species to focus on. However, the ability to wade through a pristine ecosystem, interacting directly with the habitat of another living being, and the indescribable feeling of a fish pulling on your fly line is enough to motivate action in itself. There are canaries in a coal mine for the general environmental health of, um, of a habitat when you have niche species like the brook trout and they're in trouble. It means something. It means that their niche is going away or moving in some way. The health of brook trout and their habitats are telling signs of the difficulties our environment faces today and they act as crucial indicators. Anglers will be the first to discover the harm we cause to them, and also the first to appreciate our efforts to reverse it. With habitat degradation and water pollution and, and, and runoff and other things, so we, we, we need to stay vigilant and monitor those and address them as they come and try and be proactive with our management strategies to, 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 to conserve and maintain the fisheries that we have while also improving others. To me, fly fishing is bound up with enjoyment of nature, particularly in Pennsylvania, you know, those habitats that still support wild brook trout. To go out there and fly fish in a place like that, say with a backpack and a tent and a fishing rod, uh, in, the, in the spring, it's hard to think of, to me, a better way to immerse yourself in that environment for a while and you forget all the stuff that's that's out there and go into a go into a timeless place that has you know brook trout in the clear mountain pools since the completion of the project at big spring creek brook trout populations have steadily risen siltation has decreased and riparian habitats have flourished in the face of environmental crisis, we as a species are capable of feats that flash a glimmer of hope for our planet's future. In our efforts to become more sustainable and environmentally in tune, it is crucial that we do not ignore this capability, but embrace it and utilize it completely.